salt has been long considered as vital resource throughout the ages. Indeed, it has been referred to and utilized as a primordial source of measure of value in nearly all time periods and cultures from before recorded history. The term salt is nowadays essentially embedded within each and every domain, namely the food and health industries, yet also the medical industry and other beauty industries. In Malta, salt was initially produced in Meliha during the 16th century, whereby the term Meliha is essentially derived from Mel, referring to the old village. Seas used to overflow a small lake up coast of Adira Bay, where today there is a bird sanctuary. They were named Lesalina Vecchia to distinguish them from the new salt pans developed later in Burmarad Bay, called Lesalina and Wove. These were used to produce large quantities of salt, most of which was even exported, which in turn brought about a high amount of income. The Shwini salt pans have been passing through generations for the last 150 years. For the past 40 years, salt from Shwini salt pans continue to be produced under natural conditions run by Lely and Rosa with the help of their two siblings, Josephine and Raymond. The usage of brooms, plastic buckets and motor pumps gave a rapid decrease to the total manpower required during each harvest and an increase in the quantity of salt. Salt pens area consists of approximately 360 salt pens, two reservoirs near the sea, three draining pens, and nine warming pens spread around the whole area, interconnected with a canal, all spread over one acre of land. Notably, the salt pens vicinity to the sea offer several advantages. Warming pens are easily filled with sea water, and bad weather generated from western winds cleans up all dust that might gather at the bed of the pens. The disadvantage is that rough seas in summer could sweep away all the salt and brine at the bed of the salt pens. The area in question is divided into the upper and lower part due to its geographical slope. The perimeter is surrounded by a canal leading to the sea draining away excess water from salt pans and acting as a barrier from sliding earth and rain water. The salt pans and the area surrounding them are kept particularly clean to enhance the general appearance and hygiene of the salt. When possible, the salting season starts before April, whereby any damaged embankments left by rough seas are repaired with small stones and pebbles. A well situated near the sea was used to pick up water by means of a bucket to fill water reservoirs. Nowadays, these seawater reservoirs, which are the nearest to the sea, are filled with water by means of mechanical pumps. These reservoirs were used to store water before putting it into one of the warming pans. Nowadays, these are used as warming pans which store sea water for a period of time before using it to fill the salt pans. When the water temperature starts rising, its salinity is increased due to the initiation of the evaporation process. All warming pans are interconnected by a canal to be filled simultaneously when filling any one of them. The period of time needed for seawater to evaporate is from 5 to 7 days depending on the winds prevailing at that time and also the level of water in the pans. Usually, the weather is dry, whereby salt starts to crystallize in the form of flakes that float on the water's surface. 
As they grow, the flakes settle on the bottom and salt is formed. If the weather is favorable, salt can be harvested even every five days. The salt pens are never allowed to dry up completely, otherwise the salt will stick to the bottom of the pen and become extremely difficult to harvest. The workers sweep the salt crystals formed in each salting pen with the aid of a wooden industrial broom and gather the salt in small mounds. Buckets with holes to facilitate draining are then filled with salt by means of a shovel. The buckets are transferred to the drying pans by means of a wooden pole, technically known as mensa, and emptied over a big mound of salt. The salt is then covered and left to dry for a couple of days. The unbearable hot temperatures in summer and the workers' posture while doing these actions leads to additional worker fatigue and overtiring. When all the salt is collected and put into the drying pans, the salt pans are refilled with water by means of a motor pump from a warming pan containing water which has been there longer. This process is called insa'u. Salt is then packed in sacks, which are then carried into a truck, transported and stored in a garage. Finally, the salt is emptied into large basins, and while monitoring the salt and removing any unwanted materials, it is transferred into small plastic bags, which are sealed using a thermal sealer. Salt is packed in 800 grams packets to satisfy high demand during the beginning of the season. When all shops are supplied, packets of 400 grams are then filled for the remaining time of the year. Although salt harvesting is a simple and fascinating process, it is also long and laborious. A method study exercise can be performed to improve the harvesting process. Machinery could be introduced to reduce the labor cost and operator's fatigue. However, this should be done whilst preserving the traditional harvesting process that has been passing from one generation to another for a number of years. This will ensure that this excellent trade that has given the Maltese such an excellent product in the past, will survive for many years to come. An understanding of the quintessential need for salt in our daily lives has justified the dedication put onto such hard labor to produce the finest salt in Malta. As James Bird, the 20th century American food writer and chef rightly put it, where would we be without salt? <laughs>